In this video, I'm going to go over the main benefits of using an iPad for your studies. I'll go over the apps I use to take notes and suggest some of the best ones around. I'll go over all the accessories I use alongside my iPad, and I'm also going to try and give you a full overview of all the extra benefits and cool things you can do through having an iPad. Alright, so first up, I use the third generation 11 inch iPad Pro. I went for the space grey colour and the Wi Fi only model. When I bought this iPad last year, I also decided not to go for the base storage size and went for the next size up, which is the 256GB model because I wanted to try and make this iPad last as long as possible. In total for this particular iPad, I paid 1,279 Australian dollars, which is about 870 US dollars and about 730 pounds. For a long time, I was tossing up between the iPad Pro and the cheaper 5th gen iPad Air, but in the end, I'm really happy with my choice. There was two main reasons I ended up going with the iPad Pro, and the first is because it has ProMotion technology, which means that the refresh rate of the screen can go up to 120Hz, compared to staying at a constant 60Hz like it does on the iPad Air. And what this really means is that the screen is supposed to be more responsive, the scrolling is smoother, and the Apple Pencil should feel a lot more fluid and natural like it does on paper. And the second reason is that when I decided to go for the extra storage, it was a no-brainer to get the iPad Pro because there was basically no price difference. The third gen 256GB iPad Pro Wi-Fi only model was selling for 1279 Australian dollars and the 5th gen 256GB iPad Air Wi-Fi only model was selling for 1249 Australian dollars. So if we do some quick math, that's literally a $30 price difference. The case I use for my iPad is the ESR hybrid case and it sells for 50 Australian dollars on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, the best thing about this case is how many different ways it can be used. If you're writing notes, you can fold the case back so that it's on a slight angle, or if you like writing when the screen is completely flat, you can do that too. If you're wanting to use the iPad more as a desktop screen, you can sit it upright at two different angles and you can also fold the case back if you want the extra space in front of you. Now because this case actually comes in two separate pieces it means that you can write and do everything I just mentioned in the vertical position too. I haven't seen this capability on a lot of other cases because unlike most cases, they don't have the right magnet configuration and strength to support this setup, so it's quite unique. Another thing that's awesome is that because this case is two singular pieces, when I just want to hold the iPad by itself, I can remove the screen protection part of the case and not have to hold up that extra weight. Most of the time I usually always have the screen protector part of the case with me anyway because when it comes to traveling, I know that if I put the iPad in my bag, the screen isn't going to get scratched and the Apple Pencil isn't going to fall off because it's securely locked in position by this latch. As for the pen, I use the official Apple Pencil, and while it's pricey compared to some of the cheaper alternatives like the Logitech Crayon or the ESR Stylus Pen, if you do decide to go with these cheaper options, it's good to be aware of the fact that you will lose the convenience of charging a pen by just attaching it to the side of your iPad. With these cheaper options, you do usually have to plug them in and charge them like any other device. Although I will say that a lot of these alternatives do actually advertise that you can get more than 10 hours of continuous use from a single charge so you should be able to get a full day of studying out of these pens without having to worry. From the reviews I've watched, it seems like the writing experience is much the same as the Apple Pencil, although they don't have the double tap functionality like on the Apple Pencil, which allows you to quickly switch between writing and the eraser. Now, moving away from the logistics, I'm now going to go over the note-taking apps that truly make the iPad worthwhile. And for me, the main three are Notability, GoodNotes 5, and OneNote. First up, I want to talk about the price of each of these. For Notability, you now pay $14.99 US dollars per year, with the first year having an introductory offer of $11.99. And I say now because prior to November 2021, you used to be able to buy Notability as a one-off purchase for $8.99 US dollars, but they have since moved to a subscription pricing model. For GoodNotes 5, you pay a once-off fee of $8.99 US dollars, and for OneNote, you technically should be able to use it for free by accessing it through your university student subscription. Now, if you were purely basing a decision off of price, it would make sense to go for OneNote, but when you take into consideration the small functionality differences between each of these apps, you might think it's worth the extra money. Let me explain. For example, let's have a look at the organization. In OneNote, you have notebooks, and inside of notebooks, you have sections, and inside of sections, you have pages. This layout is very systematic and makes things easy to organize. On the other hand, in GoodNotes 5, it's basically like having a normal notebook for each one of your classes. You open up the notebook, and inside is an endless amount of pages that you can fill up for one class. This might be okay for some people who like to have everything together in one file, but if you like to separate things out, then this isn't going to be for you. And then for Notability, it's very similar to OneNote. Notability has dividers, and inside of dividers you usually put your subjects, and inside of your subjects you have your notes. Okay, and another difference between these three apps is your options for saving your notes. In OneNote, you're locked to backing them up to OneDrive, and in Notability in GoodNotes 5, 
you have the options of saving your notes to any of the cloud services like iCloud, Google Drive, OneDrive or Dropbox. Also, in Notability in GoodNotes 5, you have the option of saving a local copy of your notes as an editable file or just exporting your notes as a PDF. This can be really handy when it comes to saving storage on your iPad as over time your notes will start to take up a lot of storage and you don't want to have to start deleting your old notes. So with these two apps, you could connect an external hard drive and move your old notes off of your iPad if you needed to. These small differences are the kind of things that separate each of these apps, but all in all, the basic functionality of each of these apps is what will make taking notes so much easier on the iPad. So now let's go into the general note taking benefits. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Notability, but a lot of these functions can be done in all of these note taking apps or are just unique to using an iPad. Okay, so starting with the stationary up the top, here you get access to a bunch of different colors, pen sizes, and also pen types. When it comes to drawing on the iPad, if you draw a shape and hold the pencil on the page for a second after you've finished it, it will automatically become a perfectly drawn shape. And this is also true for drawing simple things like a straight line or an arrow. Another great tool that you will definitely use a lot is the lasso. The lasso allows you to quickly circle things you've already drawn and reposition them, resize them, and also copy and paste things. Also, besides just the functions within the apps themselves, you also get to enjoy the functionality of the iPad itself. For example, you can use multitasking, which allows you to split the screen in half with another app. And this is especially useful when you're in class and you want to have the lecture slides open next to your notes so it's easier to copy things down. Likewise, if you drag your pencil up from the bottom left corner, you'll take a screenshot of whatever's on your screen. And from here, you can crop the image down to exactly what you want, and then you can copy and paste it straight into your notes. Small features like these save you a bunch of time in class and allow you to spend that time focusing on the content itself. Also, another unique feature between Apple devices is that if you copy one thing from say your iPhone, you can then instantly paste it to any of your other devices. And this is especially useful in a class if you wanted to take a photo of something that's been drawn on the board and be more discreet about it, as opposed to holding your whole iPad up in the air. Next I want to quickly talk about using the iPad as a second display, through a feature that Apple likes to refer to as Sidecar. Now, obviously this is only going to apply if you have a MacBook as well, so I don't want to talk about this for too long, but this feature can make your working environment so much cleaner and neater. Using a second screen can be a huge advantage when you're writing an essay or doing research, because usually in these scenarios, your screen fills up really quickly, and being able to spread out a little bit more can make doing these sorts of tasks just so much easier. Lastly, I want to touch on some of the considerations you should make when deciding if an iPad is for you. And the first one is the price. Obviously an iPad and all the accessories that come along with it do add up. And if you're thinking about getting one and price is a big factor in your decision, I would encourage you to have a think about the diminishing returns that come with the more expensive iPads. For example, if you decided to buy the cheapest iPad, which is the 9th gen iPad, you will still get about 80% of all the possible features you can get with an iPad. But if you decide to spend three times more than what the base iPad is worth, you will only get about 20% more features. And in reality, there are not many professionals, let alone students, that need or even get close to using all the extra features that come in that last 20%. So do have a good think about if you really need all these extra features that come along with the more expensive iPads and try and buy for your needs rather than just what's the latest and the greatest. Another consideration I wanna mention is eye health. Using an iPad instead of a physical book will add up to a lot of screen time, and if you are someone who gets sore eyes from looking at screens, then that is something I would definitely consider. I will say that having used both iPads that have 60Hz and 120Hz screens, that upgrading to a higher resolution screen like the iPad Pro can definitely help with this. In the past, and occasionally still now, I do use these blue light glasses which are supposed to protect your eyes when spending a lot of time looking at a screen, and I definitely think that these glasses do make a difference, but a higher resolution screen helps more in my opinion. Alright, so there you have it. That was some of my thoughts for those of you who are looking to get an iPad in 2023. And if you like this video and you're still undecided about which device you should get for university, you should check out this video I made here where I talk about the things you should consider when choosing between an Apple iPad and a Microsoft Surface Pro. And if you want to find out why I think all students, and in particular engineering students, should be taking digital notes, then you should check out this other video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.